So how do you min-max Twin Amps? Twin Amps is one of the most complicated fights as far as what you should be doing at any given point in time for rogues to do DPS in AQ40. So let's talk about the Twin Amps fight, what you can do, what you shouldn't be doing, how you can get more DPS from your fight and hopefully get your 99. And this this guide isn't just about 99s guys, this is about as much about min-maxing your own DPS and performing up to par and doing the most damage that you can inside the fight. Even if your guild isn't a 99 guild, you can still be min-maxing your DPS, still be improving, still figuring out how you can be a better rogue for the Twin M's fight. So this is a rundown of all the tips and tricks of how I do the Twin M's fight. And we're actually changing up the format this week. So for this video, I thought we would try recording it live on stream. So this was actually done live on stream where people could ask questions. I could break down little bits and pieces as they came up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Basically, if this format is popular, we're going to keep doing this sort of format where I record the videos live on stream and people can ask questions about the fight and then I'll edit it down and do a more digestible format in in the YouTube video, basically. And as always, as always, a text guide below. Um, usually in a few days after uploading, I make sure I have a text guide available on Classic Worldcraft as well for people that just want kind of the cliff notes of these videos and and want to know just, okay, what do I do on the boss fight? I don't need to watch a 20 minute video for it. I, I just want to know this, this, and this, right? So yeah, the cliff notes are in the description or if they're not there, they'll be there in a couple days. So again, if you want to ask questions live, you want to catch this video breakdown live on stream, make sure you follow the stream. You can come hang out and I'm going to be doing this more if people enjoy this format. All right, guys. So today's video is going to be all about twin amps how to pass 99 on Twin Amps, how to min-max your DPS on Twin Amps, basically. So we're going to go through my 99 pass. So I just did a pretty strong run in AQ40. Strong for my guild skill times, anyway. So today, we're going to go through my 99 run. Uh, we're going to go through Twin Amps in particular. We're going to talk about what you can do to min-max your Twin Amps fight. And yeah, you guys are feel that free to ask questions as we go along, but we're going to break down all the ins and outs of doing the Twin Amps fight. The most important thing for passing as a rogue is obtain the Earth Strike or Chonkaba. <laughs> okay, so I mean, first things first, uh, if, if you don't know the, the Twin Amps fight, obviously you're a rogue, you hit this guy with a big sword. Between the two, two twins that you have, you have the guy with the big sword and then you have the caster. You, you ignore the caster, obviously, if you don't already know. I mean, you guys should know this, but you hit the main guy of the sword because he is the one you're hitting. The other guy's immune to melee, so there's no point even hitting him anyway. But yeah, so I think the only danger at the start of the fight is just be a little bit careful to give like the tank like a, a couple of seconds to at least get some threat going before you go in. But um, besides that, the, the fight's fairly straightforward. So so basic mechanics, yeah. They're good, good notes, Ishkanda. Hit the guy of the sword. So basic mechanics to watch out for is teleport. So every 35 seconds, obviously you guys know that uh, the twins teleport, right? So you see here on my DBM, the twins teleport is coming up. Now the thing to note with the teleport is that it's not exact. It's a very rough estimate of the teleport. So you're going to see here, um, it's not always instant. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes there's a delay of five seconds. It just, it, it's a little bit RNG there. So you kind of have to play it by ear. Now, the other thing to watch out for is uh, uppercut. So sometimes randomly you may see the twins or, or this, what was this guy's name? Emperor Vecnil. You, you will see that he will uh, uppercut you or someone near him. Uppercut only hits melee people. So one of you guys is going to get uppercut randomly at, at random intervals. Um, if you do get uppercut, it's no big deal. It, it does like less than 2,000 damage, so you shouldn't die from it. You, it should be perfectly okay. You will get launched into the air a bit, but it, it really doesn't matter. If you get uppercut, it's not a big deal. So exploding bugs, uh, not really something that you have to worry too much about. Same with the blizzard. Uh, let me see if I can find an instant of blizzard. Okay, so you see that blizzard's being cast on some some random over here. Blizzards, uh, just avoid the blizzard. That, that's pretty straightforward. Don't stand in blizzard. And if you see big bugs that are growing for three seconds, don't go near the big bug if it's constantly growing. So you see over there, there's a bug that just that just exploded. Don't go near the exploding bug. So mechanics-wise, the amps are really basic. Especially for rogues, there's not much for us to worry about. Uh, really, all you have to worry about is teleport. Like min-maxing the teleport. And if you're not stupid, just don't go near exploding bugs or blizzard. Pretty much is, is how you do with the mechanics there. But... 
Now let's talk about how you actually min-max the fight then. Because your goal, your, your entire fight here as a rogue is literally just going to be running back and forth, hitting the sword guy every time he teleports, right? So you're just chasing this guy. Yeah, your entire fight is just chasing this guy. If you want to min-max your fight, the first thing you should do is look at your fight time. So you can do what I do, which is I just go to my Warcraft logs, right? Um, and I look at my twin amps, okay? So we go twin amps, and you can have a look at your last uh, your last kill times. Is basically what you want to do. So you have a look at your last kill times. I know that I killed it in four minutes forty six seconds, right? So this is the first thing you need to do is because you to min max your twin amps fight. It starts off with twin maxing your cooldowns and what cooldowns you can use and how many times you can use each cooldown. So I know I'm sub five minutes now on DMF weeks. I know I'm only going to get one adrenaline rush. I know I'm only going to get one thistle tea. I know I can get, possibly I can get um, multiple usages out of Blade Flurry and Earth Strike. So I want to aim to min-max that and use Blade Flurry and Earth Strike ASAP to try to get the second usage in. Because I know in a 4 minute 46 fight, I can get multiple usages of those cooldowns in. So basically you're min-maxing all your DPS cooldowns. If you have any cooldowns that you see can fit in twice or more, you want to basically use those ASAP into the fight. Um, if you can't fit in Adrenaline Rush and Thistle Tea, that's actually, and, and this will be for most people in fairly quick guilds, you won't be able to use a second use of Adrenaline Rush and Thistle Tea. Um, if that's the case, then just look for a good timing to use them, obviously. But if you can use two usages of them, then you will want to use it earlier, right? Like, let's say if my time was 6 minutes 54, like one of my earlier weeks, you want to think about using your Adrenaline Rush and Thistle Tea early as well, so that you can get the second usage of it. Because you wait too long, you won't be able to get the second usage of it. You can see here, I don't usually like to use my cooldowns on the first time. So this is just after I've gone into the fight. This is the start of the fight. I don't usually like to to do stuff on, on the first first time because uh, I feel it's a little bit risky and threat going in that quickly. I, I like to do it on the second one. So you see here, I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to use cooldowns here. I'm just going to do just normal damage here and, and use my rotations as normal. And we're going to skip ahead. Here, when we go in for the after the teleport, I'm going to use my cooldowns on this rotation here. See, so you can see I'm popping Earth Strike. I'm, I'm basically popping all my DPS rotations here. I'm wanting to note is if you're using double trinket, which you probably should look at doing possibly on Twin Amps because double active trinkets is really, really strong. You want to think about whether you're using Earth Strike or whether you're using Jomgabar first. Now on Twin Amps, it doesn't really matter which one you're using first as much uh, in general because you're probably going to use both multiple times. Um, for me, I was trying to get two usages of Earth Strike in. So I used Earth Strike first to make sure it was off cooldown quicker. Um, so that's why I used Earth Strike first in this instance. In other instances, if it's a really short fight, you might use Rendertakis first because you're not trying to get multiple usages out of your double trinkets. So that's just something to take in mind. Uh, yeah, so you can see here on the first... After the first teleport, I'm already dumping my cooldowns, right? So I'm just stacking everything. I'm dumping all my cooldowns in here because I want to get a second usage of my uh, Blade Flurry and and uh, Earth Strike in, basically. All right, so that's the first thing about min-maxing your rotation here is, is making sure that you're using all your um, cooldowns early enough. Oh, oh, by the way, I should, I should also mention, if you do use Earth Strike, you should definitely try to stack your Thistle Tea in there as well because Thistle Tea is very... Um, obviously very good with Earth Strike. It's, uh, yeah, just treat your Earth Strike as like an orc racial in that you want to use as much DPS cooldowns during each Earth Strike as you can. So that's why you see during that Earth Strike, you use Blade Flurry, I use Adrenaline Rush. Uh, you should use Thistle T as well. Um, and yeah, you should, you should just stack all your cooldowns during the, during the Earth Strike duration. Um, if you do get two Earth Strike usages in, and let's say you have Adrenaline Rush and, and... Thistle T, you can actually space them out a little bit so you could use Adrenaline Rush on one Earth Strike and then Thistle T on the next Earth Strike. If you know that you're only going to get one usage out of both Adrenaline Rush and Thistle T, you don't have to try to stack it into one usage uh, like that. But uh, yeah, so that's that's how you can you can do it if you know you're going to get multiple Earth Strike usages out of it. So now, the next part that you need to think about is don't run out too early, right? So someone asked this at the start of the um, at the start of the stream is when, when you should run out. His guild was telling him to run out at 5 seconds before the teleport that's way too early um i i like to run out at like roughly about like one second i think about starting running out um 
and and that's usually when I run out, usually one to two seconds before the teleport. Somewhere in that range is roughly when I'll run out. Um, you shouldn't run out less. Th you should you should probably be out by about one second. If you stay in longer than that, it's a little bit dangerous. So you, you typically don't really want to stay in there. I might do it once in a while, but it's it's real it's risky. Uh, you probably don't want to stay in under one second for the teleport. But um, the teleport again, it's not consistent so sometimes you see here like the teleport you see one second i start running out um and there's no teleport right so look at this is where i went to negative 1.8 second and they haven't teleported yet so sometimes it's not on exact timing so just be aware of that sometimes that's just how it is uh, with the teleport so one of the, the one of the big benefits of running out later is that uh, you don't always necessarily want to go there right after the teleport anyway right if if like let's say like we're running across the room now. Let's say I was already waiting for the teleport to happen and I was standing like right next to him and I, I DPS as soon as this, as we swap over, right? As soon as the teleport happens. It's going to be a little bit awkward because you don't want to go ham right away. You want to give the tank like a, a couple seconds to get aggro and such. So by not running that earlier, sometimes it can be beneficial because you don't have to worry about threat as much. Right, by not being there instantly after the teleport, it's sometimes it's not bad. But yeah, I would generally try to run out at like usually like that one to two second mark before the teleport goes out. That's usually when I start running. But five seconds is too early. Five seconds is definitely way too early. Unless your guild is playing it super safe, I, I don't see any reason to run out that early. Because um, you're, you're pretty much always safe. I've never been hit running out at one to two seconds. Five seconds is just way, way too early. You use, you're losing uptime like that. So the problem, like what I mean is if you run out five seconds too early, you're going to have a lot of situations where like you're, you're standing where my character is now, but they haven't teleported. Because the teleport can be delayed by like five seconds sometimes. So you might just be standing there waiting for the teleport and this is uptime that you're losing. So you don't want to lose uptime. Uptime is really important on the to an M's fight. Now, the next thing that you want to think about is combo points. So you notice um, during the whole fight, Depending on the combo points I have, uh, I do different things, right? So here I go into the fight. You notice I start off with an Eviscerate instead of Slice and Dice. So I could have just run in here and use your um, Slice and Dice running in. And that, that would have been okay. But I know that because I was pretty far away. Like if you look here, like look at when they teleport. Okay. So they teleport now. I'm, I'm still pretty far away. And I know the teleports or the next teleport timing has already counted down, right? And I, I'm running in with four points of slice and dice. If I pop this four points of slice and dice, it's going to be wasted, right? There's going to be wasted uh, slice and dice timing here. So it's an over slice and dice. So what I do instead is if I have four or five combo points and I'm not literally starting right on the boss as soon as he teleports, I know it's going to overshoot the slice and dice timer and I will instead eviscerate. So you see here, I went for a five point eviscerate instead. And then I get up a slower, um, a smaller slice and dice that isn't going to be as, as wasted, basically. All right. Um, yeah. As as uh, Redlock said in chat, another alternative is you can also pop your slice and dice early and then let the energy fill up as well. Um, both of those options work fairly well, so you should go one or the other. But again, it's it's very variable, right? Because again, the teleport isn't consistent. Uh, the teleport isn't always. Uh, on time so sometimes you might come in with four combo points of and you want to slice and dice right away and get in that asap because maybe you're you were standing next to him when he teleported in so you will be able to actually use all four combo points worth of that timer but other times you might be far away and then you know that the four combo points is going to be too much timer so it's it's very variable on what you want to do there as far as what your plan is now the other thing you want to think about is um don't waste combo points on the bugs so you see here, I never attack bugs. Uh, this is going to be a guild strategy thing. You you want to talk to your guild about attacking the bugs, not attacking the bugs, because in general, rogues are one of the worst people in the raid to be attacking the bugs. We lose our combo points every time we swap targets, and the warriors are way better at killing the bugs than we are because they they get rage and and other things from killing the bugs. So in general, um. I would recommend if your guild for some reason has rogues attacking the bugs, you guys should just get warriors and casters to handle that instead. Uh, you, rogues shouldn't be involved with the bugs unless it's an emergency where you guys are being swarmed by a million bugs. There's no reason really for the rogues to be involved with killing the bugs. The other thing that um, some people asked earlier as well 
is about your buffs and consumables. You can min-max your buff and consumables a bunch. So let, let's talk about what I did for min-maxing um, on the fight here. All right, just before this fight, notice I'm still using Valentine's Day buff here. So if you look at my buffs, I have the present buff. Valentine's Day buff is basically Scorpok buff. It's the same as a Scorpok buff. Um, 35 agility. But what I actually do here, um, as you see, is I'm going to click off my agility buff and swap over to speed Zanza. So um, this means I reduce, again, the, the entire twins fight is just about uptime. Uptime on the bus, you, you waste time every time you're transitioning in between teleports. So I do my best to min-max my running time as much as possible. So you see here, I'm going to click off my agility potion, right? So I clicked it off there and I'm going to pop a swiftness of Zanza right here. So this gives me 20% running speed. Um, I swap a little bit of DPS stats for a lot um, just better running speed basically and also if you see next to my swiftness of zanza i have swiftness potions as well so i'm also popping swiftness potions like uh an extra sprint basically to help me min max my uptime so not only do i have zanza on here i also have have swiftness potions now what you can actually do is if you want to um how you can transition for your zanza potion here is i start the raid with a Scorpok buff of some sort or a Valentine's Day buff if you still have them like me and then I click that off at Twins I swap to Zanza and after Twins I click that off again and I swap to another Scorpok buff or like a Blasted Lands buff usually so I carry I carry two sets of the Scorpok type buffs and and one Zanza potion for, for all my Twins raids so that that's just a, that's just one min-max thing that you can do um, and obviously uh, if you have them as well, you can also use, uh, do I have them here? Yeah, sharpening stones. You can see I have sharpening stones in my inventory. So twins are immune to poison. So horde, you should put sharpening stone on your offhand. And for um, alliance, you should put sharpening stone on both hands. I believe technically the elemental stone is bis by like a tiny amount for your offhand. Um, but most people don't bother going to El Elemental Stone because it's really expensive. The Sharpening Stones, like just the cheapy Sharpening Stones are good enough um, if, if you want to save a little bit of money there. I, I don't use the Elemental Stones. I just use Sharpening Stones, the, the cheapy ones. Just remember that uh, there's a Swiftness Potion cooldown. So you should, you should try to burn your Potion cooldown early if you want to use Swiftness Pots there. You can, you can get a couple of Swiftness Potions in usually depending on how long your Twin Amps fight is. But basically like the, the gist of it is that it's all about uptime. Right, you see all of these tricks are all about uptime, uh, basically because that's what's going to cost you the most DPS. It's, it's like how good can your uptime be and, and the cooldowns. So all the tricks are basically maximizing your, my uptime, your combo points, and then your cooldowns to try to make sure you get two usages out of everything. So you can see I, I, got, I ended up getting, because I used Earth Strike and Blade Flurry early, I got two usages of them during the course of the fight. So I got two Earth Strikes and two Blade Flurries in, which is, is really... Uh, important to make sure you do oh rupture okay yeah um we can talk about rupture as well uh because i do have numbers for rupture uh it, it's basically never worth rupturing uh pretty much so the way rupture works is because it ignores armor it's really strong if the if the enemy has a lot of armor the problem with this is that um from the math the twin amps basically need almost full armor for it to be worth rupturing over an eviscerate. So for swords with and without buffs, rupture loss to eviscerate just one to one um, at, at every instance, as far as like damage dealt for combo points. As far as damage dealt for com per combo point, rupture just lost to eviscerate for sword rogues with buffs and without buffs in every instance. So in that case, if you're going to rupture, you must as well just eviscerate. Um, energy is cheaper for rupture, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, because usually energy isn't as much of an issue um, on, on the twin amps. If you're about to run out, you usually, you, you usually it's usually not because of you being short of energy. Um, it's usually because the teleport's coming. For so dagger rogues, it actually gets really really close in that I, I think it was like within even six damage or something, j j like where rupture actually beat eviscerate by six damage when you had buffs. But the problem there is. It's a six damage difference. You would still, if you were going for the pass, you would still aim to to min max your your um, damage by going for the eviscerate anyway, because eviscerate can crit. 
So the big problem in the whole rupture versus eviscerate thing is rupture doesn't crit and eviscerate does crit. So when eviscerate crits, it does way more than a rupture does. And on raids with world buffs, you have a super high crit chance. So that's why it starts scaling towards the eviscerate more and more with, with more crit basically. So even in that one instance where with world buffs, um, I think rupture was beating it by something like six or less than 10 maybe 16 damage, it was a, a really tiny minuscule amount Rupture was beating Eviscerate one to one, you would still go for the Eviscerate because you would hope for the crit on Eviscerate which would m make the Eviscerate win uh, if you were going to try to RNG and min-max your pass there. Like the only case where you like maybe Rupture is if for some reason you only had the energy to Rupture and you couldn't Eviscerate before you ran over. Um, then you could maybe make a case for that. Like if you want to do it like that but in general you would just save your combo points or eviscerate if you want to blow it because like as well as that if you're going for the eviscerate instead of just saving your combo points you're not actually losing combo points if you're just running across right like like look at like this whole fight i'm just saving my combo points and using them when i run across right so it's not like you're losing these combo points so you don't have to to spend them right away you get to spend them when you go meet the guy on the other side of the teleport anyway um the, the entire use case for like the rupture and viscerate before you run away was because you're going to energy cap, right? And you want to spend more energy. So, um, yeah, so that, that is, a that is a consideration right here. So you could have ruptured there. You could have eviscerate even there. I could have, I could have thrown in a little eviscerate if I wanted to run over. So it basically the argument boils down to that. If any situation where you would rupture, because you wanted to spend energy, you wanted to dump more energy as you were, before you ran across, you would be better off just eviscerating, basically. There's like, there's no reason to really go for the rupture, unless you absolutely like, don't have the energy for the, for the eviscerate. But uh, yeah, so that, that was the Twin Amps guide. Uh, any, any more questions? <laughs>